It don't matter how many games we lose. It don't matter how many games we win. Every year, we feel like it's going to be our year. We feel like this year is going to be different. And this year, it is different. We just, it's just the off season, right? But we doing things we ain't never did before, which is actually spend money on good players in the off season. And we are doing a great thing. And not just we, specifically, specifically, Adam Peters, Dan Quinn probably, Cliff Kingsbury, Joe Witt Jr., they all putting in good words to Adam Peters to tell him, hey, how about this person? How about that person? And they're doing a good job. They still got a lot of money to spend, too. So I think we're at the point where we're finally looking good as an actual team, just just money wise and just um, beneficial um, moves like. Right now, we have, I believe, about six defensive ends. And they looking dangerous. And and, and we just brought back uh, F.A. Obata. And, man, we have people who can take advantage of less. We have people on the team that's going to be fighting this offseason, especially at the defensive end position. And we knew last season – uh one of the worst positions for us was the linebacker position. Um and look who we went out and got. We went out and got Frankie Luvu. We went out and got none other than Bobby Wagner. Now just that alone was the greatest pick we've gotten. And then on top of that, we are in the position to get a great quarterback. Out of the draft, we have a second overall pick. Everybody, I've been hearing rumors about people saying we might trade back, we might do this, we might do that. But we just brought in somebody that furthermore clarified what we were going to do in the draft. We brought in Marcus Mariota. And because of the type of runner back, I mean, quarterback he is, slash running back. It showed us what type of player the commanders was looking for and what we needed. And we already understand that we still have Sam Howell on the roster. But I haven't heard any more trade rumors about him. I haven't heard the trade has been picked back up and somebody, this team might want him, this team might want him. Um, I don't know what they're going to do, but they may be trying to load up the quarterback position and at least keep Sam Howell for another year. Um, but they just paid uh, Marcus Mariota six million for a year, so that's one reason um, why I feel like we're getting somebody out of the draft. We have a veteran right there, just in place. So when we do get somebody like a rookie, we can have him teach, you know, the ins and outs of being in the NFL, being that being that guy that has been benched before. Being that guy has started, who has started before, being that guy out of the draft at the number two pick to go to the Tennessee Titans, right? I'm just talking about Marcus right now. Just how he is resembling everything, whoever we pick in the second, in the sec, as the second pick in the first draft, in the first round. I know I'm confusing some people, but he's he embodies who we're about to get, because. He been in he's been in this position. He's been that number two pick in the first round. And he went to the Tennessee Titans and he went there and they counted on him for the first three years. And after that, they benched him. They cut him. They they traded him. They they allowed him to be a backup. Um and not only there, but other places as well, including last season, which was the Philadelphia Eagles. And the year before that, he was with the Falcons. And he has a lot to offer. He has a lot to bring to the table. He has a lot to give to a rookie quarterback who has never experienced any of it. And just think about it. If you've done something in life, and you, I'm sure we all have done it, we've done something in life where we like, 
you know what? If I was in the position to help the next person, I would. I would have told this person not to do this, to do that, to make sure you do this. Make sure you say that. Make sure you're looking out for your overall image. And it's people like this that stay in the league for a very long time, and they may stay as a backup, but they're all they're not burning bridges. They're building relationships and for the future. So people like Jacoby Brissett, you see how jobs are always available for my man because he he knows, even though he might not be the starter, he knows how to build relationships. He knows how to not burn them. He, not, he knows not how to not burn bridges. He knows how to take advantage of every moment. And just think about what Jacoby did um, for the Browns. He he said his teammates said he would write letters to him. And then when he stopped writing letters, they looked at him like, what, what you doing? Like, I needed those. You know what I'm saying? Like, just you got to understand the whole aspect of the quarterback position. You're not only there to just win games. You're there to win the hearts of your friends, of your teammates, of your coaches. You have to be in that position. And when it comes time to be a man and say the right things that need to be said, like I needed to be better, I needed to not do this and do that, a rookie quarterback needs to learn those things. They need to learn how to be a quarterback in the NFL. You need to take it. You need to take um, accountability for your actions and for your whole team. It's like you got to treat the team as if they're your child. You got to take advantage. I mean, take accountability for whatever happens. If the defense suck, you, if the offense suck because of the defense, if the defense suck because of the offense, you can't throw your you can't throw your defense under the bus. You can't throw your offense under the bus. You got to take that accountability no matter what comes with it. So if we have a veteran that has been there who has had his ego, his ego, (laughs) his ego be in the way at certain times, he got to know when to pull that back. Some people would say that Caleb Williams has an ego at times um, where he feels like he doesn't have to do certain things. But you got to have that veteran quarterback there to let that rookie quarterback know when you should do this and when you should not do this, you know, um, when you should show up for certain things, when you should talk for certain things, when you should not be so arrogant at certain times. But that's something that Caleb Williams has to learn. He understands how the game works, but in the same aspect, he's doing a lot more harm than he is good to himself. And we all understand that he's a great college quarterback, but it's a huge different aspect when you come to the NFL. Everybody's good. And you don't have a Super Bowl. You don't have a Pro Bowl. You don't have a playoff win. You don't have anything under your belt. So you can't talk anyway. Like you back at the bottom now. You're at the bottom. So now you got to earn your stripes. Now you got to put put time in learn the people you work with again you're at the bottom you gotta you gotta fight for people's respect and having marcus Mariota there is a perfect is a is a perfect example of who we need and what type of player we need and he could probably help a Jaden daniels uh a marcus i mean a, a caleb williams you can he could probably help him you never know but it's it's and then you know it's a reason why we don't just keep Sam Howe there and have Sam Howe try to coach up a rookie because in a sense he's still new. He's only started one year. And of course he's this is going to be his um his third year with us. But that doesn't still mean anything. He hasn't been through all the ins and outs like a Marcus Mariota. And like I said before, you know, I said we should have got Russell Wilson cuz you know it's not, I mean, it's, he got a lot more accolades. But at the end of the day, you don't want somebody that, you know, really wants to be in the forefront. You want somebody that doesn't have a huge ego like Marcus Mariota, somebody that you can coach, somebody that can, you, can, you can let them know that, hey, we might want this rookie quarterback to start this year. We might not want him to start. So we need you there. We need, you know, 
we want a huge less of a risk and more production and you know just want to have great relationships and then that's another thing that's another reason why we don't go why teams don't go out and just get anybody you got to have people that blend well with other personalities you got to have people that know people like and that's one of the reasons why for example Dan Quinn went out and brought over John Witt Jr. and he brought him over here to us because that's somebody that he has chemistry with that he works well with and that's another reason why I'm sure Dan Quinn brought over um Ken Norton the one he won a Super Bowl with he brought him over like that's another reason because you got relationship you build relationships you know who you can work with and you don't have any 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 huge differences that can make working together hard so um I'm just naming a few of the great picks we've got in free agency and just how beneficial they're going to be. And I'm just excited about the season. And I know um, nothing had the season hasn't started, but I'm feeling really good. I don't know if it's just me, but this happens every year. But what can I say, man? They get me so hyped up that I can't be nothing but excited. And. Man, I'm still excited about the second overall pick, man. And um, I know for a fact now we're not trading back. Just let me know how y'all think about Marcus Mariota. In the beginning, you know, that's how we always are in the beginning. When we first get a player like Jacoby Brissett, we like, whoa, what? Why we don't get out? Why we don't go get Kirk Cousins or why we don't go get a star? But then you got to think about the overall picture. Is that star going to work with our people? Is that star going to cost too much? Is that star going to cost our cap? Is that star going to allow us to have a rookie and develop that rookie? Is that star going to want to develop a rookie? Is he want to go? Is he going to want to take the back seat for a little bit, or does he want to be that guy? So it's a, a lot of questions, and we got a lot of answers. And I'm loving the answers we got in free agency, and we still got a lot of questions. A huge question is who's going to be our quarterback, because it seems like. The Brown, the Bears might not go get, um, they might not trade Justin Fields and go get Caleb Williams. They may, might go get a wide receiver, and that wide receiver may be the top pick. Might be um, Marvin Harrison Jr. That might that that might be who it is. I might have said his name all wrong, but y'all get the point. They might go get him as their first overall pick. Who knows? But that's the beauty. That's the beauty of it. You don't know. So it's just a lot of speculation going on. But I appreciate y'all for tuning in. And let me know what y'all think about the commanders and what we've been doing so far. And I'm not going to go into extreme detail, but there's still a lot of moves I want to make. And I I definitely, definitely think we should get Tyron Smith for our left tackle, even though we know his ceiling right now may be 13 games a season. But I think that's better than nothing, man. At least pay him a one- or two-year deal. We got the money. We got the space and opportunity. I'm just excited for us to go do it. And I know we're going to get some O-line help with the second. We we know we got two uh, second-round picks and two third rounds. So I know we're going to use them wisely. We got a great person ahead of our office, Adam Peters, and I'm excited to see what he's going to do with it, man. And y'all stay tuned, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in and watching the videos. Comment. Let me know how y'all think, what y'all think, and uh, I'm out.